What's up guys, Tim Halstead here with episode 39 of Fixing Up the Old 409 Cleveland. Tear down two, since I'm going through this again. But, no big whoop. As I always say, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now before, we had taken off all the rocker arms, I got those all stored in bags, and we're gonna pull off the cylinder head here now. Um, like I said, I like everything clean when I start something like this, so let's see what we got. I was saying how I like little unique lights, like to buy them for certain projects. If I see something I like, I like to pick up a unique flashlight or something like that. But um, gloves too, I like certain gloves. It takes a while to find a pair that, are, that feel good, that you can work with tools with fine um, precision, so to speak. But right, let's see what we can do. This is the part where you break your back. So like I told you before, I, uh, I got that new project that I want to do. And um, for that 40 Ford Coupe, Making that into a race car, drag car, big tire car, that would be pretty cool. So, I was talking to Mike Weeks about that. Mike might uh, be in to help me out with that. I'm gonna try to do it myself though. I, I've never done it before. They have books on it. If I can read it, or I can see pictures, I can do it. So. That's what I'm thinking. I just want to get this project over with and running before I jump into something else. And like I said, that track boss, that thing's all ready for me to figure out where I'm sending it. And uh, I got to talk to the local guy here to see what they have to say, see if they want to get involved with it. Um, I was actually talking to Morgan today through text, and uh, he's really pumped on those secret A3 hats. He's like, you know what, let's just run those. And I'm tempted. It's funny how things change. You get a plan, and then next thing you know, you got something else going on. But uh, he's telling me, because these were like, what, 54 cc combustion chambers, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so it wasn't as high compression as I thought it was. I gotta run the numbers and see exactly where it was, but it was more like a 13.5 or something like that. Not 14.7, like I thought. Because that was based on 50cc heads. Um, but anyways, those Secret 83 heads are all welded up. I'll put, a, I'll put a picture on this video. So he's gonna machine the combustion chamber, so it can be really whatever we want. So that thing's gonna, but I wanna limit it to like 14.7. I don't wanna go really past 15. That's, you don't need to go that far. It's starting to leak a little water here. You don't need to go that high. You know, these old blocks, I don't think they like that kind of compression, at least not for very long. But, like I said, I just gotta figure out who's gonna machine that track boss. I'd like to get going on that thing. That'd be a pretty cool thing to do simultaneously. Um, I'm thinking about having the machine work done, because I, I did talk to someone about it. And then have it sent to me and me putting it together myself, you know? Really, I just want to, I need a nice, I'm looking for one of those Rimac spring testers, you know? Comp cams used to sell them. They're, they even look like that blue color. But damn, to find those things, you can't find them anywhere. And uh, I'd like the thousand pounder. Although I've seen, this, there's other spring testers. You know, if you're gonna buy something, I wanna buy something good. I saw there's like a pro form for like 450 bucks, but I think that's it's pro form. I want to say it's um, company nobody really cares for. Can't think of the name. But anyways, I want to find one of them. Or if anybody knows of a decent spring tester, like a bench type, that's what I want. Bench type. Let me know. And 
I want to tell, hey, give a shout out to Eric Johnson. He's a buddy of mine from Columbus, Ohio. Um, I don't know if Brian Hayes, if you watch this too, but we all hung out together, all raced together. Eric's got a pretty bad, uh, bad um, 69 Mustang Fastback. Used to have a, I think a 383 Cleveland in it. It's pretty bad at, bad. Chet Huff, Herbert, roller cam. I mean, the thing was running like, I want to say 1030s or something. Streetcar, he drove it. So it was pretty bad. And uh, that's a shout out to you, Eric. Thanks for uh, keeping in touch. Let me grab a magnet. Everything looks pretty cool under here. I don't see nothing crazy going on. And if you, you, I've been talking to, like I said, Jason Murphy, cool, cool cat, man. Enjoy listening to this conversation on the messages and. Um, Built some pretty mean motors. That Matthew Salmon, his car, that big old car, that thing's, that guy will weigh some weight. That thing's pulling off, what, 1028s? It's a monster, man, screaming. Sounds good, Jason. I like that. Well, let's see what we got. I know we're going to have a little spillage of some liquid. But at this point, I don't really care. I just want to get this thing done and off so I can keep it rolling. Nice. See what it looks like. Now that looks good. Good looking combustion chambers. I don't want to be dropping this stuff. You know, I want to give a shout out to my wife. Andrea, thanks for putting up with my YouTube antics, you know, talking and to people on messages, and I get a lot of questions I answer, especially with the YouTube channel, guys. I really appreciate that. Uh, I put a picture, or excuse me, a video of Steve's 65 Mustang. That thing sounds wicked. That thing's, you can tell when the compression gets up there, the way they have that idle. And uh, everything changes, I'll tell you. Right about 13, 13 and a quarter, 13, five, right there is when it goes to a different motor more docile and that I shouldn't say docile but just a different sound when you have something that's 11 or 12 to 1. Wait till you hear that 13 it's a cylinder pressure you know it just makes and the cam timing man that just they just got to sound themselves all their own but yeah this looks good here's the uh, MLS gasket let's I'll, I'll bring a I'll bring you right over and take a peek at it So I don't know what you're going to be able to see, but it might be a little dark, but everything looks good. You could tell that thing's running good. When you see those pistons and everything looks pretty uniform in color. To storage bags. Get the kind with the lock on them. This little slider here. They work well. They don't, you don't have to worry about them opening up on you. Let me get these in here and we'll keep going. I just don't want to lose anything. Just do something stupid. So this gasket's looking mint. Now, one thing Jason Murphy was telling me is he likes to use like, copperhead gaskets, and um, because they seal so much superior, even on the street, you basically once you get done using it, to use it again, clean it up, you anneal it by heating it up and um, putting it back on and torquing it. I've never used them; they sound pretty cool like that. That's something I'd like to try. Have to worry about them 
blown out. One thing I've learned is once you take something like that apart, take the head off, you want to get the deck cleaned up. Wipe it off, make sure you get oil on it or some lubricant like that cheap Walmart spray I have. The last thing I want is surface rust on the deck. I mean, this thing looks a choice, so so do the, so do the cylinders. I can deal with that for sure. See what you're saying there, Jason, about the valve release. Let's see. He says that the gaskets sometimes are not cut out for the valve release. Now, in this particular case, mine mine actually is pretty well. Every one of them. Both for intake and exhaust. I'll show you. even but you can see it it's like over here and over here like the little round area right here a little cut out but I still would like to try those they're durable and if they last as work as good as he says that's cool then you're gonna take the lifters out of there what I'll do is I'm gonna clean this up, get everything organized, get my parts organized, and pull the studs out, I'll flip it over, and we'll take the oil pan off, and, and, and look in there. The first indication is once you pull that pan off, you could, you'll see in the pan if there's some debris or something immediately. So hopefully there isn't anything, and then it's a matter of pulling off that girdle, pulling off a couple main caps, and looking at it. You know, I mean, if they're looking mint, then then is it you pull everything out to go through that to make sure, or do you take that chance? And you have to put all the pieces together. Good oil pressure, good leak down, not gross contaminants in the oil or smell of burnt oil, the filter being fairly clean, so it's kind of a crapshoot. Let me show you this. So I just picked this up. Very nice piece. The old LSM SC2000. I'm telling you, this thing's choice. Works like a charm. Roller bearing, roller bearing. Strong, safe, up to 1,000 spring pressures. 1,000 pound spring pressures. So that's what I need for these heads. I'm not gonna use some cheap thing and have it take off my face. So I picked this up, but want to throw a shout out, finish uh, saying to the, the people that helped me, that it, I'm grateful for that. And met a lot of nice people along the way and answered a lot of questions and it's a good informational highway, so to speak. And give a shout out to Dr. Ron Burgess. We've been talking here and there and I might get into a collaboration with him He's part of Awareness Motorsports with Aaron and Larry Puff. Um, I messaged Aaron back and forth, and it's we just got to get our schedules to coincide, and we can message and maybe talk on the phone and kind of figure out what we can do. Maybe make this a little bit bigger of a show, so to speak. I think people are getting something out of this because it's just me in my own garage. It's not like I'm anybody special. Anyone can do this. You know, the, the trick is, or what you need is a good machinist. and. They're getting hard to find somebody good. I was talking with Mike Weeks on the phone today. He's having that practice tree nationals. So I want to go to that. A bunch of people will be there. It'll be a cool little scene. Uh, lots of race car talk, bench racing. I'll bring some parts. We can maybe check it out. It's good to learn that stuff because it's not like it was. A lot of these new generation kids are not really into the old Cleveland. That Cleveland is kept alive by us 
middle-aged people and people that are probably in their 25 range, you know, they're just starting to kind of read about it. I want to keep the Cleveland alive. So I talked about dyno in this 409, which I want to do. So I got to figure out what head I'm going to use, whether I'm going to use this head. See, that's what I mean. Things change like the snap of a finger. You know, I might switch those secret A3 heads because I might not build another combination after this, except for the track boss. And I'm putting the blue thunders on that, so I might go for the gold and uh, save the A3 heads I got here for another motor. That guy that wanted the XC block, he, he doesn't want one. He's worried about it because it does have a sleeve in it. And uh, I can understand that, no big deal. I'll get it checked out at the machine shop. I'm gonna to talk to them because they may be able to finish the track boss for me. I'll drop that block off, get them to hot tank that, and clean it up and, and see what we got to work with. Um, but I appreciate the people that helped me out and sponsored me. Like I said, you know, I got, you know, Calvert Racing and Mark Menser. He hooked me up with front shocks. Thanks, Marks. Shock needs, call him up. He'll help you out. Um, we got Todd Fuchs, 351.net, 351cleveland.net. Precision oil pumps. Doug G, call him up for your oil pump. I was talking with T&D, I might be able to talk with them again and, and see if I can come up with a little program for them to help them out, they may help me out. Yellow Terra, I've been talking to Nick at Yellow Terra and because of that rock room, I told him about that. He says, you know what? They're really not serviceable, so we're gonna we're gonna help you out. We're gonna send you a set of rocker arms uh, for a minimal cost, and that's nice. I appreciate that, guys. And I'll have a spare set in case I need them, or I can put them on another motor. Darren Morgan at Mass Motorsports. Mark Chacon, Bullet Cams. There's, there's probably more, and if I didn't mention it, make a shout out to me. But I'm trying to build this channel, and hopefully people will get interested in it. And join in, you know, in your own setup, what you got, share it with us. Let's get this oil pan off, so stay tuned.